I am now going to walk you through graphing notes part one. We'll start on the velocity versus time graphs, and then we'll go down and do the position versus time graphs. We're going to start on this first velocity versus time graph in the uh, top left corner, and we're just going to talk about the parts of the graph. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the slope. Remember, slope is rise over run. So in this case, that's the rise, which is the change in velocity, over the run, which is the change in time. Now the meaning of the slope on a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. Acceleration is just how quickly the velocity is changing. And so it tells us how much change in velocity over how much time, how long it took to do that. Another important part of the velocity versus time graph is the y-intercept. This is the part where it intersects that vertical axis there, the velocity axis. And this is the initial velocity. The vari variable we use for initial velocity is v naught. It's a v sub zero. The variable we use for acceleration is just a little a for acceleration. The initial velocity, this is the velocity of the object when our timer was at zero seconds. Lastly, one of the, um, the third most important part, or the third important part of our uh, velocity versus time graph is the area bound by that graph. Let's see, I can highlight it here. It's this whole area under here. So you're going from the graph, from the line, all the way down to the axis. It's this area that's bound in here. And that tells us the displacement of the object. Uh, another way you can remember this is just looking at the units. To find area, we gotta do length times width, and maybe a one half in there, some other things with depending on the shape. But we have a meters per second on the vertical axis for velocity. So meters per second on the vertical axis times seconds on the horizontal axis, so if this is length times width on some of the more, more simpler graphs, we're going to get meters in the end. And so this is the displacement. So the area under the curve or the area bound by the curve or the graph is the displacement. And the variable we use for that is delta x. So these are the big important parts of a position versus time graph. You have to know what the meaning of the slope, the meaning of the y-intercept, and the area bound by the graph, or the area under the curve. Let's move over to this graph over here on the right now, and let's talk about what uh, these graphs actually mean. So uh, the horizontal line that you see at the bottom here this is going to indicate, remember, for a velocity first time graph, this is a velocity first time graph, a horizontal line means a constant velocity. The velocity is not changing. So this is a constant velocity. And then the slanted line, the sloped line up here, that is going to be a changing velocity or non-constant velocity. And one way I like to kind of remember this or figure it out if I get confused is I just make up numbers on my velocity versus time graph. So for instance, if this was zero, this was one, two, three, and four meters per second, then here we have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So on my constant velocity, each second, as time goes on, the velocity stays at about negative you know, 3.5 meters per second. So the velocity is constant. On the top one, though, each second we see that the velocity changes. So at t equals 0, the velocity was positive 4 meters per second, and then went to positive 3, positive 2, positive 1. I'm not doing this at a very good, very good intervals here. And then we hit 0 meters per second. So we see that the velocity is changing. So the 
big thing you need to remember is that for a velocity versus time graph, a slanted line means constant velocity, and or it means change of velocity, and a horizontal line means a constant velocity. Let's go down to these uh, last two velocity versus time graphs. What we want to see with this is first let's get a description of the motion, which can be more difficult than you think. Um, so for this first one here, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, and I want you to describe, write down, what this object is doing based on this velocity versus time graph. So go ahead and pause it right now, and then do that. Okay, hopefully you paused it, and you wrote down what you uh, thought for your, your description. And let's see, what is this object doing? Well, initially it's moving forward. So for this first part here, and we, we're going to kind of separate it into parts right here. That'll be the second part. The first part, it's moving forward. And what's it doing? It's slowing down. And how do I know it's slowing down? Well, if I make up numbers here, if this is 4, 3, 2, 1, as time goes on, I can see the velocity is decreasing. It's getting smaller and smaller. So it's moving forward and it's slowing down. After it hits the uh, uh, time axis, at this instant right here, it's not moving because its velocity is zero. But that's just for an instant. Afterwards, what is it doing? Well, if we make up some numbers over here, negative one meter per second, negative two meters per second, negative three meters per second, and so on, the velocity, the magnitude is getting bigger. The numbers are getting bigger, and they're negative, so it must be going backwards because it's negative. So for the second portion, it's going backwards. And it must be speeding up. And I know it's speeding up because the numbers are getting bigger, and I know it's going backwards because the velocity is negative. So it's speeding up. Now, one thing you may notice about this graph is that the slope is constant the entire time. The rise over run is a constant negative number. So the entire time we have a constant negative acceleration. And we will go into uh, more detail later about what the direction of acceleration, what that means. But just notice that it's a negative acceleration doesn't necessarily mean it's slowing down because down here it's speeding up. Um, and a negative acceleration doesn't necessarily mean it's going backwards because up here it's moving forward. So just be careful about that. So for the one on the right, I want you to do the same thing. Pause the video, write out like I did the description of the motion, what's it doing, and then uh, come back here and we'll check it. So go ahead and pause it now. Okay, hopefully you went and uh, tried this yourself. It's really important to try it yourself rather than just watch me do it and say, yeah, yeah, I got it, that makes sense. So make sure you've paused it and tried it yourself. If you get it wrong, that's okay. So for this first part here, it has a negative velocity. Again, if I make up numbers here, this is my zero meters per second. So anything down here is going to be negative. Anything up here is going to be positive. So it must be moving backwards. So it's going backwards for the first part. And by the first part, I mean before it crosses the time axis there. It's going backwards, and it's slowing down. And I know it's slowing down because if this was negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, the magnitude of the velocity is getting smaller, so it must be slowing down. And then this first part, or the second part here, it's moving forwards. It's going to have positive velocities above the time axis, so it's moving forwards. Oops. Moving forwards and it's speeding up. The velocity is positive and it's getting larger and larger and larger. Now this entire time it's a constant slope. Oh, again here, that instant it's not moving. When the velocity is zero. 
Now this entire time here, it has a constant slope, so it must have a constant, and in this case, positive acceleration. And we know it's positive because the slope is positive. Remember, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. And then let's look at this constant positive acceleration. It does not necessarily mean going faster because the first half of the motion, it was slowing down. So constant positive acceleration doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be speeding up. All right, so those are the velocity versus time graphs. Here's your notes that you should kind of have for velocity versus time graphs. And um, now we're going to move down and do the position versus time graphs. So for the position versus time graph, we're going to look at the important parts of the graph. Once again, the slope is going to be very important. Slope is the rise over run. So in this case, it's the change in position over the change in time. And we call that the velocity. So the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. Now, here's where kids screw it up. So we said up here, I thought you said slope was acceleration. Well, that's the slope of a velocity versus time graph. The slope of a position versus time graph is the velocity. The y-intercept of a position versus time graph is the initial position. The var variable we use for initial position is x naught, or x sub zero. It's the position when the time is zero. The va variable we use for velocity, oops, is a lowercase v. So then again, this is a position versus time graph. So on a position versus time graph, the uh, slanted line, like a uh, that's a straight line, could be slanted means it's going at a constant velocity. So this portion here, this is a constant velocity segment. And what's confusing about this is we just said for our velocity versus time graphs that a line that looks like this means a changing velocity. Well, it's a different type of graph. So you always have to ask yourself, what kind of graph is this? If on a uh, position versus time graph, it is curving, that means it's a changing velocity. So both of these curves mean changing velocity. And how do we reason through that? Well, if the straight line, the slope gives us the velocity, if it's curving, then we're having different slopes. Here we have a very small slope, and then it's slightly bigger. If I look at the tangent line here, the slope's getting bigger and steeper and steeper and steeper. So if the slope is changing, the velocity must be changing. The location of the curve, as in if we're down all the way down here on this one, or up there on the original curve that I was uh, drawing on, that does not affect the motion. Like where it starts, the initial position, the only thing different about these two is the initial position. I could take this bottom one and slide it up and it's the exact same motion. It's just where it started. So everything else about all the other properties of the motion would be exactly the same. If we go over here, we will do more on uh, these graphs, but these are supposed to be parabolas. And you can kind of see there's a concave up parabola and a concave down parabola. The concave up parabola can be split into two parts. So we have part one here, part two here. The concave down can also be split into two parts. Part one here, part two here. We're going to look at these more later on. But all of your position versus time graphs can be made up of either straight lines or these four parts of the parabolas. Uh, so whenever you're drawing position versus time graphs, sometimes students will actually draw off to the side a little parabola like this, and then they'll decide, oh, this is the part I need, or oh, this is the part I need. So just kind of go back to this if you get stuck. These are your options for this class, uh, as well as straight lines. All right, we've finished graph graphing notes part one. You need to understand, and you need to memorize, what the slope and the y-intercept and the area bound by the curve on the velocity versus time graph are, and the slope and the y-intercept on the position versus time graphs. You need to be able to look at these graphs and describe the motion of the object.
All right, we're all done. Thanks for watching.